You may have recently seen news headlines that inflation has fallen to a two-year low. And while this is technically true, I think it's only half the story. The way inflation has often been talked about in the media the past few years, I find to be incredibly misleading, and it's recently been annoying me a lot, quite frankly. So I wanted to make this video to talk about what's actually been going on with the current inflation situation, and why I think the inflation headlines and charts that people see can often be misleading if they aren't explained properly. So let's start with the recent headlines about the lowest inflation in two years. If you've watched the news at all recently, I'm sure you might be seeing a chart of the recent CPI inflation data that looks something like this, where you have the CPI readings on the chart peaking back in June of last year, and it's been going down ever since. But here's the thing you have to realize. Even though the direction of the chart is going down now, it's important to note that the data still shows that prices in the economy are 4% higher than they were at this time just one year ago. And that's because this CPI chart that we are looking at is not like a stock chart at all, or other charts that you might be more used to. And that's because the vertical axis on this chart is not measuring the prices themselves. It's measuring the rate of price increases. So when you see the line on this chart starting to go down, it doesn't mean that prices are going down. In fact, prices are still going up quite a bit. All this chart is showing you is that prices are going up a little slower than they were last year. Now is that better than the alternative? Of course it is. But this chart sure doesn't mean that inflation's gone away or that prices are going down. But if you don't interpret this chart correctly, you might be fooled into thinking that they are. So what would a chart showing the compounding effects of these steady price increases over time look like? Well I just so happen to have a chart to help visualize this and I highly doubt it's one that you'll be seeing in the news. This chart is from the St. Louis Federal Reserve website, and it's a chart showing the purchasing power of the US dollar over time, with the purchasing power measured on the vertical axis and time measured on the horizontal axis. As you can see, the purchasing power of your dollars only really goes in one direction, and that's down. But there was an especially sharp decline in purchasing power from 2020 to 2023, as inflation got out of control. The situation looks like it's starting to stabilize a little bit, but CPI going down isn't ever going to restore that purchasing power of your dollars. And I think most of us know that because we're living it. Your grocery bill or rent bill isn't going down, and you shouldn't expect it to. The price increases that happened from 2020 to 2023 due to inflation are pretty much locked in at this point. So while the rate of inflation is now starting to slow down, the damage has already been done. Purchasing power was very quickly lost the last few years, and you're never going to get it back. So despite all the positive headlines about inflation hitting the lowest level in years, it doesn't mean that your bills are going to be getting any cheaper. And when you actually dive into the details of the CPI inflation data, there are a lot of details that paint a bit of a darker picture than what these news headlines might lead you to believe. It's important to know that there are actually two main parts to the CPI inflation data that gets published every month. There's the headline CPI data, which includes all goods and services that are tracked by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. But there's also a section called Core CPI. Now, Core CPI is important because it excludes changes in food and energy prices. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, why would you want to exclude those two things? After all, food and energy are pretty important bills for most people. Well, the reason these two categories are excluded from core CPI is because food and energy prices naturally experience more volatility and often fluctuate more wildly. So the thought process behind core CPI is that it removes these two categories so it can get a more stable look at price increases by removing the most volatile components, which can often be outliers in the data. The Federal Reserve and other government policymakers often pay more attention to core CPI for this reason because it's more indicative of the underlying inflation trend. And when we look at the core CPI categories in the most recent inflation data, we can see that core CPI inflation is actually up 5.3% compared to a year ago, which is notably higher than the 4% headline inflation number. This is because falling energy prices have helped lower the headline inflation number quite significantly. But in core CPI, things start to look a lot worse. Core CPI prices have actually gone up at least 0.3% from the prior month, every single month since November. 
and don't even get me started on housing. The shelter category that tracks housing prices is up 8% from a year ago. And housing is a main expense for most people. So inflation is still very much alive and well in the economy, and it's worse than what the headline inflation numbers might tell you. If you compare a chart of headline CPI and core CPI, you can see that core CPI has been consistently high the past few months. It is not falling anywhere near as much as the headline inflation number. And the most frustrating thing about all of this is that so much of this inflation problem could have been avoided in the first place if government leaders hadn't completely mishandled fiscal and monetary policy the past few years. As we all know, the economy faced a major shock starting in 2020 from the pandemic. Understandably, the U.S. government was worried about the potential for business failures and extreme economic pain as people quarantined. To try to avoid a major recession, the U.S. government began to inject incredibly large amounts of stimulus money into both consumers and businesses, through outright stimulus checks and business loans. In addition to all of this new money being injected into the economic system, the Federal Reserve also took interest rates to near 0% which made it incredibly easy for people to borrow money at virtually no cost. All of these measures put tons of money into the pockets of consumers and businesses. And with nothing better to do during lockdowns, the U.S. economy began to experience a massive spending boom and increase in demand. This surge in demand also combined with supply chain issues from lockdowns in order to create widespread shortages on all sorts of products. These shortages then quickly drove up prices as goods and services were in such high demand and short supply that businesses began to charge more to try and keep up with the demand. Now to be clear, I'm not blaming the government for initially trying to give the economy a bit of a boost as the pandemic started. They were right to be worried about the economy running into a severe recession. But the policy error is just how much money they injected into the system and how long they did it for. The Federal Reserve insisted for months on end that inflation was transitory and would go away on its own, even though this was very clearly not the case and inflation was only getting worse. It took them all the way until the end of 2021 to finally admit that they got it wrong and that inflation wasn't going away. And it still took them several more months to finally raise interest rates from near 0% in March of 2022. Similarly, the government was still sending out stimulus checks as late as March of 2021. There was no reason at that point to be maintaining such loose fiscal and monetary policy when demand was through the roof and the economy was doing fine. The government's insistence on continuing down that path despite the strong economic data and high inflation was just irresponsible and negligent. The government's refusal to normalize its economic policy made inflation way worse than it potentially had to be. Now, I know people definitely benefited from the extra stimulus money, and I don't want to completely discount that. But this is a textbook case of the solution being way worse than the problem. I don't know about you, but I don't think a couple thousand dollars was worth the trade-off of widespread inflation and permanently higher prices. Your monthly rent bill is not going to get any cheaper and it's never going to go back down to what it was before 2020. There are now permanent changes to the economy because of the decisions the government made. And now, unfortunately, people have to live with them. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the current inflation situation in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more finance content. Thanks.